have a very specialized uh, public institution, uh, the executive director of the Toronto Atmosphere Fund, uh, Julie Langer, uh, who is formerly from World Wildlife Fund, and uh, she'll tell you what uh, uh, the Toronto Atmosphere Fund uh, is all about and what their plans are. To wrap it all up, <laughs> from the parliamentary perspective, is uh, the co-chair of the Green Economic Task Force, a member of parliament, all the way from Sina Boki Valley, um, which is out in the northwest part of British Columbia. Beautiful area. Um, who is the energy critic for the New Democrats, uh, Nathan Cullen. So uh, let me call on uh, Derek Finn to uh, start us off right here. Round of applause for Derek.
Um, one of the measures is to take the makeup air. The makeup air is the air that goes into a building to make up for what's being exhausted. That's why it's makeup air. And we have this air coming in uh, 365 days a year. Uh, we have to heat it in the winter, cool it sometimes if we can in the, winter, in the, in the summertime if we have cooling on it. So it's a very expensive 100% fresh air. There's, there's no recirculate, recirculation in the system. They usually have gas trains which heat up that air. Uh, in this case, you can see we've taken out the gas train and we've, we've, uh, we've run the hydronic heating from new high efficiency boilers through here so we can save energy. And we put variable frequency drives so we're not pushing 100% fresh air through that building 24 hour a day at, 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 uh, at, at maximum velocity, we'll be able to reduce it. Two o'clock in the morning, not too many people are cooking, we don't have that much exhaust, we don't have to have that much supply. So we match the supply and exhaust and reduce the amount of air. Um, variable frequency drives, as I mentioned, we use them on makeup air. They allow us to control pumps, motors, the pumps that take the water up to the top of the building, the chillers, the cooling towers, fans, anything we need to use. Building automation systems to control the system so everything works together, we're not eating and cooling at the same time, and we're using optimum uh, times. These atmospheric boilers are take the air from around the boiler room. And you can see the discoloration on these, and that's because there's so much heat that's wasted. And uh, oil manufacturers or, or contractors will come to your building and say, well, why do you want to put in high efficiency boilers? We can put in, whoops, sorry. We can put in these atmospheric boilers. They're much cheaper, and they run at 82% efficiency, and your high efficiency boiler here only runs at 84%. Well, the difference is the standby losses and, and the losses within the room. So while this is throwing heat off into the room, and even when it's off, it's throwing heat up the stack because the water's running through that. These high efficiency boilers, and these are condensing boilers, but they're high efficiency. You can see they still have the plastic wrap on them. You know this plastic film that you put on to protect them? And these are running, and the plastic film hasn't melted. So you can see how much heat is being lost out of it, which is zero. So everything is controlled, you control the heat, control the heat loss. And the energy efficiency of the systems is vastly different. It's not 2%, it's, it's 12 or 15% of the heat These are high efficiency heating boilers, these are high efficiency condensing boilers. Condensing boilers can be used for domestic hot water and they are 94% efficient because we condense the water that goes, instead of going up the flue and, and, and um, get energy from that as well. So one of the things that we can do is ban the use of atmospheric boilers, especially in new buildings. New condominium building shouldn't have it. So that's for Olivia to take back to, 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 to.